In the expansive history of horror films, revenge has often been a dish best served cold, and usually brutal and bloody. Characters residing in the horror genre often undergo the worst forms of suffering imaginable, from unspeakable methods of physical abuse to relentless psychological torture. As such, revenge against the perpetrators of these abhorrent methods of persecution is often the sweetest type of retaliation imaginable. Now, we do already have a video covering this topic, so be sure to check that one out, but with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 more horror movie victims who got the best revenge. Number 10. Renfield in Renfield While R.M. Renfield has always been Dracula's most loyal minion, 2023's Renfield transforms his role into that of the Count's whipping boy. Tasked with selecting victims for consumption and mercilessly abused by the ungrateful Prince of Darkness, Nicholas Holt's character unsurprisingly becomes depressed and disillusioned with his nightmarish occupation. Renfield attempts to join a support group for people in codependent relationships, but Nicolas Cage's vampire won't even allow him to have that. As soon as Dracula discovers the group, he proceeds to brutally murder them before his familiar's very eyes. This proves to be the final straw for Holt's protagonist. After eventually capturing Dracula in a magic circle, Renfield and Aquafina's Rebecca utilize an Aladdin's cave of murderous implements to deal out a healthy portion of just desserts. Unfortunately for the Count, his captors don't actually know what will kill him for good, meaning that nothing is off the table. Axes, maces and chainsaws all feature amid spurts of gore, but that's just the entree. The duo gleefully mix what's left of the Count with cement and holy water, using ice trays to turn the concurrent combination into nice, manageable portions. Renfield and Rebecca then proceed to unceremoniously dump Dracula's remains down a drain. There's overkill, and then there's whatever this is. But it's undeniably a spectacular instance of payback nonetheless. Number 9. Pat and Amber in Green Room Green Room follows the harrowing tale of the Ain't Rights, a punk band beset upon by murderous neo-Nazis after witnessing a young woman's murder. Barricaded in the film's titular Green Room, it's hard to overstate the level of suffering these musicians endure over 95 minutes. Their tormentors' use of fighting dogs is a particularly brutal touch, producing predictably stomach-churning on-screen results. Led by Sir Patrick Stewart's calculating Darcy, the skinheads are ruthless in their efforts to put the band six feet under. The only member of the Ain't Rights left standing by the movie's ending is bassist Pat, played in a magnificent turn by the late Anton Yelchin. At this point in proceedings, Pat's sole surviving ally is Imogen Poot's Amber, a friend of the initial murder victim. The sheer amount of trauma the unfortunate pair have undergone before the climactic sequence unfolds makes their revenge all the more delicious. As he arranges the bodies of the dead band members on his property to give the illusion of trespassing gone wrong, Darcy comes face to face with the recently escaped duo. Stewart's villain has just enough time to realise that his intricate plans have all been for naught, and a final incredible stare of disbelief to boot before being gunned down. Number 8. Erin Harson in Your Next Betrayal is a particularly intimate concept, never more so than when one is double-crossed by their significant other. 2011's Your Next sees the Davison family reunion go horrifically wrong after the gathering is inexplicably set upon by a group of masked killers. Protagonist Erin Harson finds herself amongst these nightmarish surroundings seemingly by accident, having been invited along at the behest of her boyfriend Crispin. In a shocking twist, Crispin and his brother Felix are eventually unmasked as the villains behind proceedings. The duo engineered the abhorrent attack in an attempt to seize their parents' vast fortune, only to be undone by the unlikeliest of faces. Erin is duly revealed to have grown up in a survivalist compound, cultivating a penchant for guerrilla warfare as a result. Accordingly, the unfortunate killers find themselves being picked off one at a time by this diminutive woman. After dispatching Felix with the help of a blender, yep, you you heard me correctly, Erin answers his phone to hear her partner's voice confirming his complicity in the appalling events. Coming face to face with her boyfriend soon after, Erin contemptuously listens to Crispin's feeble excuses for his heinous actions. Thankfully, Davison's weaselly attempts at justification fall on deaf ears. After Crispin attempts to buy her silence, his vengeful partner impales him by driving a screwdriver through his throat. Number 7. Goreng in the Platform The level of satisfaction derived from this particular 
another iteration of cinematic vengeance might be questionable, but it's poetic justice at its gory best. 2019 sci-fi horror The Platform depicts a dystopian reality featuring a vertical self-management system, where the inhabitants of an enormous tower block are assigned two to a floor. These unfortunate humans are randomly allocated to a new level on a monthly basis. Their only source of sustenance is an enormous slab that descends through the building carrying an enormous banquet, stopping for two minutes on each level. With hundreds of floors to traverse, the lower levels are lucky if there's even a morsel left by the time the platform reaches them. This morbid status quo takes on even greater horrifying significance for the film's protagonist, Goring. Assigned to level 171, he awakens to find that his floor mate has tied him to his bunk. The abhorrent old man then informs Goring that he intends to use his flesh to sustain them both over the next month. Thankfully, Goreng is eventually rescued by a woman who travels the building in search of her lost child, which allows him to stab his captor to death. Close to starvation following his confinement, Goreng gratefully eats his bunkmate's flesh. It's beyond sick, and the bunkmate subsequently haunts Goreng's dreams, but it's exactly the same fate that the former had marked out for him. Number 6. Noah in Fresh 2022's Fresh follows the story of Noah, a young woman who discovers that her new beau, Brendan, is a cannibal. After awakening to find herself chained to his basement floor, Sebastian Stan's smooth-talking villain informs her that he plans to harvest the meat from her body for profit. Taking objectification to appalling new levels, the abuse that Noah undergoes is unspeakable. Not only does Brendan intend to keep her alive in this nightmarish predicament for as long as possible, he sadistically punishes an escape attempt. After being knocked unconscious, Noah groggily comes to, on the operating table, as Stan's antagonist surgically removes her buttocks. Fortunately for the collective souls of anybody watching, Fresh is the rarer brand of horror film that sees its villain get their comeuppance in spectacular fashion. Noah tricks Brendan into to believing that she is coming around to his abhorrent way of life, seducing him over a meal of human flesh. Pretending that she's about to perform oral sex on her captor, the resourceful young woman bites off his knackers instead, in the most delicious piece of irony possible. And it doesn't get any better for him from there, as Brendan proceeds to get seven shades of doo-doo kicked out of him by Edgar Jones's protagonist and other female escapees from his basement. Number 5. Red Miller in Mandy 2018's hallucinogenic horror Mandy sees Nicolas Cage take on the role of Red Miller, a lumberjack whose girlfriend is brutally murdered by a biker gang of demonic cannibals, the Black Skulls. Restrained and wounded, Miller can do nothing but watch in anguish as his beloved partner Mandy is hung up in a sleeping bag and doused with gasoline. The gang laughs sadistically as they burn her alive before Red's very eyes. Unfortunately for the bikers, Nicolas Cage ain't the type to take that sort of thing lying down. After taking a moment to imbibe a bottle of vodka and shriek with anguish, Red is ready for action. Arming himself with a crossbow and an improvised battle axe, the grief-stricken Miller butchers the bikers before moving on to the cult that hired them, accidentally consuming an industrial amount of psychedelic drugs along the way. Despite tripping his balls off the entire time, our hero annihilates the children of the New Dawn with all the restraint of a grizzly bear ripping a salmon apart. Eventually coming face to face with the man who ordered Mandy's death, Red throws a severed cultist's head at him before crushing his skull and joyously setting their headquarters ablaze. The lesson to be learned here? Do not mess with Nicolas Cage. Number 4. Kim Soo Hyun in I Saw the Devil While I Saw the Devil may operate primarily as a macabre thriller as opposed to a fully-fledged horror, the brand of revenge on display in 2010's South Korean offering would put the majority of fright flicks to shame. An agent in Korea's National Intelligence Service, Kim Soo Hyun sees his world turned upside down after his pregnant wife is brutally murdered by a serial killer. The killer soon discovers what a terrible terrible choice of victim this young woman was. After discovering the killer's identity, Soo Hyun implants his prey with a tracker. Following his every move and listening in on his conversations, he proceeds to sadistically haunt the footsteps of his wife's killer. Eventually, he does manage to barf up the tracker, but it ultimately does little to save him from his pursuer's retribution. Soo Hyun's penultimate act of revenge is to lock his nemesis into a makeshift guillotine, leaving him desperately holding the rope, preventing his own decapitation between his teeth 
teeth. The unabated venom in the NIS officer's revenge is highlighted by one final nail in the coffin as his victim's estranged parents and young son arrive on the scene. As they open the door, a separate mechanism is triggered, beheading him in full view of his screaming family. It may have turned our hero into the very monster he set out to destroy, but it doesn't get much better than this in terms of payback. Number 3. Jennifer Check in Jennifer's Body It seems almost laughable that a film that was critically derided upon its release has gone on to gain status as a contemporary feminist cult classic. Despite a newfound propensity for murdering her male schoolmates and dining on their flesh, Megan Fox's Jennifer Check is a victim in just about every sense of the word. The teenager becomes demonically possessed after she is offered up as a virgin sacrificed to Satan by rock band Low Shoulder, in the hopes of ensuring future fame and success. Unfortunately, Jennifer wasn't a virgin, causing the ritual to transform Fox's character into a bloodthirsty succubus. After a brutal spree of murders, her vicious predilections are only halted by her best friend, Amanda Seyfrieds and Nita. However, there's still a heavy price to pay. Killing the demon possessing her comes at the cost of Jennifer's life. Anita is also bitten by Czech in the struggle, meaning she now manifests several of the latter's terrifying supernatural abilities. Jennifer may not be alive to dish out her retribution in person, but she still manages manages to do so by proxy. Anita is incarcerated in a mental asylum for Czech's murder, but she soon breaks out to unleash vengeance on the band responsible for this hellish turn of events. The film's credit sequence reveals that Seyfried's character tracked down Low Shoulder, savagely murdering them in their hotel as payback for their exploitation of her dearest friend. Number 2. Cecilia Cass in The Invisible Man I know I didn't treat you the way you should have been treated when we were together. Staking a claim for the grossest understatement in recent horror history, so speaks Oliver Jackson Cohen's Adrian Griffin, the eponymous villain of The Invisible Man. The sentence is directed towards his former partner Elizabeth Moss's Cecilia C. Cass in the 2020 horror's climactic sequence. C. initially left Adrian after a campaign of violent abuse from her former paramour. To say that Adrian didn't take this well would be like saying you might get chilly if you were locked in a cryogenic pod for a decade. An affluent engineer, Adrian fakes his suicide before utilising a high-tech suit capable of rendering him invisible to mete out his retribution. Jackson Cohen's villain stalks and torments his former partner like a vindictive poltergeist, before framing C for her sister Emily's murder. Adrian had also earlier tampered with Cecilia's birth control, impregnating Moss's protagonist with his monstrous offspring. Thankfully, he gets his comeuppance shortly after his patronising soundbite. Having framed his brother for his crimes, the exonerated Griffin has his throat slit at his own dinner table by Cass where wearing another suit. In a delicious stroke of irony, he bleeds out in the same manner that he murdered Emily. Feigning horror only whilst in view of Adrian's CCTV, Cecilia gleefully watches her abuser bleed out, mockingly echoing his earlier taunt. Surprise! Number 1. Beth in Hostel Part 2 Eli Roth's sadistic Hostel franchise revolves around the Elite Hunting Club. This sinister organisation is in the business of abducting tourists and allowing their clients to maim and murder them, if they have the money to pay for their depraved delights. This status quo leads to one of the more satisfying instances of horror-based vengeance in recent memory, as depicted by the series' second instalment. Lead protagonist Beth eventually finds herself at the mercy of depraved psychopath Stuart. Roger Bart's bestial villain wishes to torture her as a result of her resemblance to his loathed wife. Beth eventually manages to turn the tables after Stuart attempts to rape her, chaining her vile captor to the same chair she found herself restrained in. A recent recipient of a vast inheritance, Beth then buys her freedom from elite hunting club boss Sasha. Stuart desperately tries to outbid her, but Sasha is more than aware that he cannot pay. Lauren German's protagonist seals the deal by cutting off Stuart's genitals and feeding them to the facility's guard dogs. However, Beth isn't quite done with her retribution. Upon her release, she immediately enlists a gang of psychotic children to set up an ambush for Axel, the duplicitous model who lured Beth and her friends into the club's clutches. Beth beheads her betrayer without a flicker of emotion, leaving the children to play football with her severed head. And that concludes our list. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.